welcome to the Perspective Podcast. I'm your host, Chandler Hoagland, and today we have Taylor. This is my sister, and we are going to be talking about the LGBTQ plus community today, and there is no one better to ask than Taylor. Um, so hello, Taylor. Thanks for being on today. Thanks for having me. Okay, so we're going to start with Icebreaker, and that is if you could be in a reality TV show, what TV show would it be and why? Ooh. Most certainly it would be the challenge. MTV's the Ooh. challenge. Okay, yeah. I hear a lot about that, probably from you. <laughs> You're always binging that, I feel like, but I've never seen it. What is it? It's basically just a reality show where people compete for money, which is- Love that. Literally what I am doing my whole life. That's why I joined yeah. tech sales. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, true. Just um, your life. But it's also, it's also like a compilation of a social game too. So it's like having to navigate like, you know, different dynamics and relationships yeah. and tough conversations and getting people to like do things that you want them to do without innately forcing them to do them. So, oh. which is like, kind of like sales too. So yeah. I feel like I'm, I'm living my own version of the challenge in my everyday life. Yeah, true. So yeah, I've kind of seen you through every period of your life, all the transitions, kind of seeing who you are as a person and how you've changed. And let's just get right into it. When did you realize that you were gay? Um, I think about this often. I think my earliest recollection is probably six, maybe. Six. Yeah. And I wouldn't say that it was like, oh, I'm gay. Because yeah. obviously, like, I don't think I knew what that was. But I definitely knew that, like, I felt different mm -hmm. you know than other people and then I think again probably in like middle school I started to realize like you know why am I paying attention more to like my girlfriends and I am my guy friends you right. know um things like that and then I think for sure in high school I was like I'm like struggling with this right so obviously you're not going to be coming out at six because like you said you didn't really know what that was um, but once you for sure knew and like understood the idea, were you comfortable with coming out? No. No. And no. why is that? I think a lot of it was just shame, mm -hmm. like shame because of like where I grew up or where we grew up and societal pressures. And, you know, I played softball at a really high level. I played at University of Texas at Austin. I played for Team USA and your life is under a microscope and you yeah. feel this just pressure to be perfect and that just didn't fit the mold at the time you know like this was pre-2015 when gay marriage was legalized and so it wasn't it wasn't as cool it wasn't as trendy as it is now yeah. you know so I think it was a lot harder mm -hmm. to kind of go against the grain if you will in that yeah. sense yeah. so no that makes sense and I think you kind of hit the nail on the head from the start with where we grew up I know I mean we went to the same high school um but I didn't know a lot of people that were like out and openly gay. I had heard rumors, of course, just the common high school rumor, especially with the basketball team and the softball team and all the stereotypes that that brings. Well, I think that's it, right? It's like you talk about stereotypes. I mean, I played softball. Not only did I play softball, but I was really good at softball. And so it's yeah. like I just felt like I was just layering on these stereotypes and I was just fighting so hard against them because I didn't want to be the stereotype. Right. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. um, I didn't want to fall into that. That so. makes sense. I mean, we did grow up in a somewhat of a kind of a judgy community. Like you did want to fit the mold. Um, mm -hmm. It is in the Bible belt. So I think that just like adds layers of why it can be really hard to come out and be who you want to be. Mm -hmm. So in high school, you said that's when you really realized, were you still dating guys? I mean, what did that mm -hmm. look like? Yeah, I had boyfriends. I had lots of boyfriends. Um I had one girlfriend in high school, um, obviously was very secretive about it. That right. was in conjunction with some of the boyfriends that I had. Yeah. So, you know. Did you feel like you had to have boyfriends to mm -hmm. like help kind of cover that? Mm -hmm. There, I mean, that's not to say that I didn't like them. I mean, I did like them. I mean, there was at least two that I can think of off the top of my head that I was like, I like, maybe I'm not all the way gay because I yeah. did really like them and I was very attracted to them physically mm -hmm. um some even like into college you know mm -hmm. um and same thing with college like I had boyfriends in college too I had a, a few more girlfriends in college um <laughs> but never out right I was never out about it um 
And I just felt like I, I definitely did things and put myself in situations that I felt like I had to, in order to maintain kind of like my image, maybe. Say, image. Yeah. Facade, yeah. if you will. Yeah. So. No, I get that. And how long once you realized to when you came out, what was, how long was that? I came out at 23. Okay. So, I mean, you do the math. Yeah. Um, <laughs> a long time. A long That's a long time. time. That's a long yeah. time to pretend to not be yourself. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I couldn't imagine. And just having to go through relationships and you're just not feeling like you're all the way in because you can't be all the way in. Like, mm -hmm. I'm sure it's very, very difficult. And so when you did like break up with these guys, did you ever tell any of them why? And it was because no. you were gay God, or no? no? God, no. No. <laughs> It was, well, it was always something. Well, it was always something. Like, it was like, me, not you. yeah. Or it was like, you know, I don't know. Like a lot of it, I just blamed on softball. Yeah. I don't have time. I, I would, you know, had a fear of getting pregnant. I like, which was a true fear. Like yeah, I did, I did have a pregnancy scare in college and that was enough for me to realize like, no, I am for sure gay. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, um, yeah. but I think it was a lot of things. It was like, they were, I don't know they were too dumb or they were, they weren't that funny or I didn't find them that attractive anymore or right. I didn't have time or whatever it was. It was always something, but never find. the truth of I never the truth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And when you did come out, were you in a relationship at the time? Yes. And how did that go with your partner? Were y'all dating privately and then y'all came out publicly? So she was already out had been for some time mm -hmm. um we started a relationship we it was private for about a month and then it was kind of like I don't want to do this secretively so either yeah. you figure it out or this isn't going to work and so I felt this is what she said to you mm -hmm. okay yeah and so I felt like obviously pushed into doing it now in hindsight like I don't want it to make I don't want to make it seem all bad, right? Because yeah. I think I needed that little extra push right. to rip the Band-Aid off. Um, and I think having a relationship gave me a little bit more confidence because it was like, I'm gay. And then I can just like run back to my relationship yeah. versus like standing on my own and being confident in who I was by myself independently, um, which looking back, I wish I would have done that differently, right? Because mm -hmm. I think through that process, I just, I still felt a lot of shame. Yeah. But now it was a little bit of external shame too. And so it just pushed me deeper into a relationship that again, in hindsight, like probably wasn't the best relationship for me at the time. Right. So, so if you weren't with that person, do you think you would have still waited to come out? Um, I think I probably still would have come out eventually. Yeah. I don't know if it would have been at 23. Yeah. Right. So, and when you came out, how was that with your friends and family? Do you feel like you were accepted, especially well, like on social media, because y'all were posting at this time once you came out that you were together. Um, so yeah, what did your like acceptance around coming out look like? Um, I'm sure everybody has different perspectives on yeah. those memories, right? Um, because it was very emotionally charged. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I remember a lot of my friends being like out time like, oh, so they knew it, well I think people had an idea right yeah. like I think there's only so much that you can do to pretend um I think there were definitely some friends that didn't stick around um mm -hmm. which you know whatever and I think from the family aspect like it was it was a toss-up like I remember mom and dad being kind of like what the hell yeah. <laughs> is this you know now granted looking back like I think the way that I came out probably had a lot to do with it. Like, I feel like I could have done a better job of having just a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them versus like just blasting it on social media and not giving them the heads up. Yeah. And so I know that that contributed to a lot of the emotions around it. Yeah. But like, even you, right? Like mm -hmm. you were what, 17 at the time you were still mm -hmm. in high school. You were dealing with your own stuff, like yeah. that every high school girl deals with. And then on top of that, you have a sister who is like in the spotlight that everyone knows. Mm -hmm. And that's not to gas my ego up. That's just a fact. Right. And then it's like this huge thing happens and you didn't know either. No. It's like you're dealing with the ripple effect of that, even though you have nothing to do with it. And like, I'll never forget 
and this isn't a knock to you. And I think I've told you this before, but like, I'll never forget the first thing you said to me after you found out. Mm -hmm. And it was, what are my friends going to think? Yeah. And that in the moment of like something that was literally changing the trajectory of my life, like that was the response I got, Yeah. you know? And so that was really hard for me because it was like, I don't care. Right. Honestly, like I don't care. Right. Um, and so I think that kind of started the wedge, you know? Yeah. Um, oh, which agree. obviously like we're, it's fine now, right? Right. Um, but I think that was really hard to hear in the beginning. It's like, yeah, I don't care. Like, what do y'all think about <laughs> me? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know? I think that's like a really good point in that you like under stand maybe other people's perspectives too not that I'm condoning what I said because I definitely could have handled it better being a little 17 year old brat like that was not what I should have said at by any means and I know that now um and I don't want to like give anyone excuses because I think hindsight we all could have handled a lot of things better mm -hmm. um but, you know, we were in this place, in this town that, like, that was not normal. And you being... Well, and that's the thing, right? It's, like, you look at nowadays where you have social media. I mean, back then, social media wasn't wasn't really a thing. It was yeah. Facebook. And that was it. Like, right. Instagram, kind of. Twitter, kind of. Like, you didn't have TikTok. You didn't have Snapchat. You didn't have mm -hmm. all this stuff readily available, right, to, like, expose you to different ways of thinking. It mm -hmm. was just kind of, like, you knew what was in your small radius, and that was it. Yeah. And so I can't really blame anyone yeah. for oh, and we were in a bubble. Like yeah. we just lived in a bubble. So I remember going to school and this girl I went to school with was friends with you on Instagram. And mm -hmm. at this time you were posting with your significant other and I wasn't thinking anything of it. Like, oh, this is just her friend. And she came up to me and goes, oh, is your sister dating her? Is she lesbian? And I was like, no. Like, what are you even saying? Like, there's no way. Like, she just had a boyfriend not that long ago or whatever, you know? Then maybe it was like two days. We go and we, we're eating dinner at Chili's and mom and dad sit me down and they go, so we need to tell you something. And I jokingly, probably not even a good joke, probably shouldn't have said it, <laughs> said, oh, Tay's gay, isn't she? And they're like, <laughs> like, why I said that as a joke? Mm, kind of weird but um I said oh Tay's gay isn't she and they go how do you know and I said oh. no you're kidding right like that was just, <laughs> that was supposed to be a joke like yeah. there's no way I'm just saying that because someone said that to me like and um and then I remember just crying going oh my gosh my my life's over like that like it was gonna affect my life that majorly like that's just me being so self-conceited I don't know but I will say what I struggled with is because I've followed your footsteps my whole life I also played mm -hmm. softball we knew the same people we were in the same groups and and everyone just expected me to continue to follow you so when you came to this realization and you came out I didn't want people to expect that I was also going to do that and what happened was someone came up to me and said oh your sister's gay now you've done everything that she's done before so does that mean you're gay mm -hmm. and I remember like that was just like a stab to the heart because it, gay being gay was such a negative connotation my whole existence and it was so like looked down upon that I was yeah. like people aren't going to look at me the same because of my sister who I followed my whole life. And so like that, that was where I was coming from again, not the greatest place, but it was just like, that's on them that they think that way and not me and not you yeah. and not anyone else. Like that's their pea sized brain. No offense, but like, that's what yeah. it was. And I wish I would have realized that in the moment instead of taking it so personally. Yeah. But why yeah. would you, right? Like, why would you think that if that was never a thought before? And that's the thing, right? It's like, you can't expect people to do things that they've never done because if you do, then you're just setting yourself up for disappointment, right? right? And so like, that's the thing. It's like, now that I'm extremely confident in myself, right? Like none of that affects me anymore. But back yeah. then, like for sure, you know? Yeah. 
what would you say the biggest or most common misconception about being in the LGBTQ community is? Mm, yeah. So I would say like, there's a big misconception of like, now granted, like, I think there's always reasons for stereotypes, right? Like they don't just come out of thin air. It's usually because someone had an experience with somebody and that's where the stereo came from, or stereotype came from. Right. Now, that being said, like, you know, people assume that like LGBTQ IA plus individuals, like they're all just like, um, like partiers or they all do drugs or they're all just sleeping around with each other or they're all, um, you know, super progressive in a way that it's like the alphabet army, right? Where it's like, they're going to lose their shit over pronouns and like yeah. things like that, which there are some people out there like that. And, but that's in every subset of People, there's always going to be an extreme or something there's know? going to be extremes in everything whether you're yeah. gay black white asian straight whatever you know it's it's everywhere um but i think the biggest misconception is that is like you can be gay and also be just a normal functioning citizen of society like right. those two things can exist synonymously yeah. and it happens more often than people care to believe yeah, well, I think what happens is people get exposed to these different communities and in any way, any community through media and media is going to heighten that. And you have these people behind keyboards and you have these um, extremists that are that's all they do is like go on and, and feed people. This is what our community thinks when they're mm. not the ones that are really should be speaking for the masses because they're not representing what a lot of the masses right. of that community think. If Say your mom and dad or dad, mm -hmm. love you, dad, but he's not getting out much. He's not going out into the world that much. And what he's seeing is what he's being fed through media or on TikTok. And algorithms, and, you know. And, and so, yeah, and it's like, if that's all you're knowing about these groups, mm -hmm. that's all you know. And yeah. I think that when these extremists get online and push those narratives so much, like that's where these huge stereotypes can come from and misconceptions. Yeah. And, um, mm -hmm. but I totally agree with you is there's so much more outside of that and that you can, well, you can and I think like, things. well, I think like to shoot off of this topic, right. Is my favorite response is people are like, oh, well, like I would have never guessed you don't look gay. You don't act gay. You don't, it's right. like, what does that even mean? Like, right. what do, is that supposed to be a compliment? And that being said, like, I will say that, you know, unfortunately, you know, individuals and communities that don't fall into that subset stereotype, like they are afforded more luxuries than other people that maybe do fall into that stereotype, for example. Right. So like mm -hmm. I present what most considered to be like, feminine right like ath athletic feminine long hair I wear makeup I dress not well you know yeah um I have a great job like I I talk like I'm educated and so people don't associate those things with being gay yeah you know what I mean totally. and like you can look at any community community of people like if like a black person right so a black individual goes into a job interview has like a normal name is extremely well educated in their communication and people are like oh I didn't expect that it's like what does that even mean yeah you know what I mean and so it's like I don't know it's just a very interesting kind of perspective well, they, yeah well they just it's like if you bosses. don't fit this mainstream mold then there's mm -hmm. no way that you can also be educated or um, competent or or uh, wealthy or whatever it is right you know? totally so. No, I think you have really, really good points. So at one point, would you say your straightness or your heterosexuality was in question? Like you questioned it. Like, like you questioned, am I actually gay? Or am I not? Did you ever yeah. have that internal? So mm -hmm. with you having that, I want to talk about like on the other side of that, do you think that there are people in the LGBTQ plus community that question what they are or who they mm -hmm. are and um if they're actually gay yeah yeah absolutely I definitely think that that's a two-way street I think just how straight people question like am I gay did I just have this one drunk experience with a girl yeah. because I was drunk or because I wanted to do it 
right? Yeah. And that happens more oftentimes than people care to admit too. And, you know, I definitely think that people in the LGBTQ community probably feel that way. Because I think the thing about labels is like, once you label yourself as something, like you have to, you feel committed to it. Like right. you have to, you're committed to the bit at this point. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's really hard to change that. And so it's like some people like oftentimes will say I'm bi because they don't want to commit to just being a lesbian. Right. Right. Or it's like, it's really hard for people to understand like, oh, that girl's a lesbian, but now she's married to a guy. Like, what is she still a lesbian? Is she straight now? Is she queer? Like yeah. what's happening? But at the end of the day, it's like, who cares? Right. Literally who cares? Yeah. But people get so caught up in these like labels and these names mm -hmm. and things. And it's like, people are allowed to change either way either way yeah people just they pick up the label and they commit to the bit and it's really hard to change the mindset yeah so I guess that was kind of going into my next question like once people do change do you feel like it's harder to change back to going into a heterosexual relationship than it is I mean, to change going to a homosexual relationship um I don't know just because I've never experienced it myself yeah. personally like I've been around individuals who were gay for a very long time and then ended up marrying a man mm -hmm. it was mostly it was mostly women marrying men um but they like have from what all intensive purposes of what I can tell on social media like healthy marriages they've had children they've had you know what I mean so it's like were they gay for a little bit were they just experimenting did they decide that this lifestyle was too hard like right there's a number of reasons that people would go back or maybe they just weren't gay at all and they just wanted to rebel and and that's the other thing right it's like you get people that come into this community for one reason or another and so that's the thing it's like people are like oh it's a choice the choice the choice it's like mm -hmm. for some maybe but for others no like you think at six I was choosing to feel that way at nine mm -hmm. I was choosing to feel that way at 18 I was choosing to feel that way. Like, no, I wasn't. Right. And were you trying to suppress those feelings like every single time they came up? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And yes. so you just mentioned a little bit that like some people may leave the community because it may be hard. So mm -hmm. would you say like there is discrimination within your community for who you love? Like you're at a job interview and I don't know why it would come up, but say mm -hmm. it does come up. Do you feel like you are ever walking on eggshells, bringing it up in fear of um, being it again? I would say at the beginning, yes, because again, like a lot of internal shame that you still work through. But now, like it's the opposite. Like I make it a point to make it known because mm -hmm. what I don't want to do is work for a company that has a problem. Yeah. No. And so, like I make it known from the beginning of the interview process, like you know, this is important to me. Here's why. Not that like I'm gay this is important to me, it should be important to you. It's like, you know, I've been a part of employee resource groups like Hashi Queers or Women of Hashi Corp. And I really value diversity and inclusion within an organization. That's something that's important to me. How do you feel about that? Yeah. Like, what are some benefits that you can explain to me for same-sex couples, mm -hmm. right? Like things like that, that you can you can figure out if a, co if a company or an organization prioritizes those things without just being like, I'm gay and I need you to tell me how you feel. About it. Yeah. <laughs> You yeah, know, there's yeah. just different ways to approach it to get a better understanding of this is the right organization for me or not. So would you recommend that for everyone kind of going through job interviews, feeling like they have to hide? Absolutely. Absolutely. I would say do not hide who you are, because what you don't want to do is get into a situation where an organization doesn't value that. And then you're stuck or you feel yeah. stuck, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. So yeah. better to just be upfront with it and just nip it in the butt from the beginning. Yeah. Now that you're in a serious same sex relationship and you've been in a serious different sex much. relationship, um, yeah. what are the differences? Not if they much, are really, yeah, not, not really. much, really. No, like not internally, not really. Maybe some, well, some differences. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, none that we're going to talk about on here. Yeah. Um, we appreciate but that. Like, but like intrinsically from like a relational standpoint, nothing really. I mean, you still need communication. You still yeah. need trust. You still need safety and security. You still need um, partnership. You still need love. You still need mm -hmm. care. You still need respect. Like you still need all of these things that make a relationship go round. Yeah. It's really hard for people to like understand that is that um, 
it's almost like the respect of a serious heterosexual relationship is so much more than the seriousness of a homosexual relationship. Would you say mm -hmm. you feel that? Yeah, sure. Not necessarily my community because I don't surround myself with people like that. But yeah. I would say, yeah, sure. Like there's people in general society. Mm -hmm. And so you are in a community where a lot of organizations there are very accepting there's it's a very accepting society in general in where you are have you ever been in a society and lived there that wasn't as accepting yeah I mean I lived in Midland Texas for two years and it was the longest worst two years of my life yeah <laughs> truthfully I mean you think like you're living in number one you're living in West Texas which has just tra traditionally been more conservative than any other part of the country um it's predominantly white and Hispanic, which are, again, very traditional subsets of people. I, it's also very religious. So mm -hmm. a lot of things that happen were led with God and the Bible and the church. And it's like, as someone who basically grew up in a church where, you know, oh, oftentimes it was like, this is a sin. Homosexuality is a sin. You're a bad person. You're going to hell. It's like, those things have been beaten into you for so long that it's like, am I going to hell? Like, why would I want to go to a place that's just going to tell me I'm a terrible person every Sunday and then they're going to ask me for my money? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Why would I want to go to a place like that? Um, and I know churches have changed. I know that all churches aren't like that, but there it was. The ratio of men to women, like it's an oil town. The ratio of men to women was like 10 to one. Yeah. And like, there really weren't single women in Midland. They were married. They were usually wives of husbands who moved there to work in the oil field. Like, Right. They were stay-at-home moms. They ran Lularoo businesses out of their house. They, whatever. Yeah. Um, and there was definitely fears, like, of going out and, like, just kind of being myself and someone having a problem with it. Like, it was were not you uncommon. Confronted? Oh, yeah. Like, it was not uncommon. Like, I went, I'll never forget. I went to a bar and, with a bunch of friends, uh, not with the person I was with at the time they weren't there um but there was a man that came up to our table of full of women and put his arm around me and said which one of you is going to suck my tonight you're kidding mm -mm. and he was inebriated for sure okay Older but there, there's never an excuse for that you know that was not uncommon wow like there would be people that would say things on the street mm -hmm. like in the grocery store, you know. You said that time your partner was not with you at the time. Was it worse when y'all were together? Um, we just pretended to not be, oh. <laughs> basically. Yeah. Or I mean, like we your just... safety though. Mm -hmm. And so what would you say to someone in that same situation right now? I mean, I, I know not everyone can leave where they live. Like that's sometimes yeah. just not feasible, but like someone living in a part of this country where they may not feel comfortable for their own safety mm -hmm. or well-being. Yeah. Um, it's hard. It's a really tough spot to be in. And, you know, my advice is do whatever makes you the most comfortable. I don't yeah. think, that, I don't think it's a one size fits all. I think yeah. there are definitely people who don't care and we'll throw caution to the wind and just be like this is who I am and I'll take the risk and the responsibility that comes with it um and I commend those people that was not me at the time um mm -hmm. for me it was proceed with caution yeah well I'm really proud of you in that because I'm sure it was very difficult and hard and it's also hard because that was during your first open relationship with a woman and now it's like well now I've come out to the world but now I'm having to go backwards in my own community because of how I'm perceived just for who I love and not actually of who I am, you know? So now being in Austin, Texas, do you ever feel like you have to hide who you are? No, but I also don't care. Yeah. So, so. you've grown into like a new perspective on how people perceive you. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like a lot stronger mentally and emotionally than I think I was at that point in my life. Cause like I was also still very young. I was 24. I yeah. was not emotionally mature or just mature in general I was yeah. very new in my career so like I wasn't exactly making a lot of money and I just felt like I didn't really have a leg to stand on you know yeah. more Whereas like now yeah I was more vulnerable but now it's like I have a su successful career like I'm I have a master's degree I you know I've done and accomplished a lot of things in my life and I'm very confident in who I am now um that I just don't give a shit yeah well so, we love that for you 
We really truly do. Um, yeah. So you kind of touched on this before where you only surround yourself with people that accept you and love you. Um, mm -hmm. So is that an expectation in your life that you expect everyone around you to be an ally? No, I'm and, not forcing anybody to be an ally. I just yeah. won't be, I just won't have a, rela a relationship with you. Yeah. I'm not asking you to do anything that you're not comfortable with. Right. I just won't engage with you. Yeah. We've seen yeah. that in our own family. I mean, yeah. yeah, you know, what is the best way to become an ally for those that want to support you, but are either scared or don't know how to, cause they feel like they're going to say the wrong thing or, you know, what is, I think that's the, that's the thing is like, there's never a wrong thing to say unless it's like hurtful. Right. But I think there's a way that you can approach things that you don't understand with mm -hmm. love and care and curiosity that like, it's okay to have those conversations like this yeah. one. Yeah. Right. Like there's a lot of things you don't know, but we're having a dialogue about it that doesn't feel um like ill intended, you know. Right. Attacking so. in any way. Right. Right. So. Yeah. Just listen. Like I think that's a big thing. Cause I've asked you a lot of questions before that I just didn't understand, or some things that I've like really struggled with. Um when it came to like religion, like I felt like I had to pick one or the other, but I couldn't have you in my life and I couldn't have God in my life. Like, because the thought of like, you can't love God and love people that are gay. And I still struggle with it. I yeah. still struggle with the fact it's like, can I be gay and be Christian? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. There's a lot of people that are, but there's also a lot of people that aren't. Right. So yeah, it's, it's something like that I feel like I've struggled with too. And I think that having these open conversations um, has helped me understand your perspective and and not just what I thought because of mm -hmm. how I grew up or just the outside looking in, like genuinely asking you, what does this mean? I also think too, like there's, there's layers and there's steps to being an ally, right? So like the first step is understanding. Yeah. Right. The next step is supporting. And then the next step from there is like, it's more outward, right? It's like, now, you know, now you understand, now you support it. Mm -hmm. And like, now it's time to be vocal about it. Mm -hmm. Right. So like, if you ever find yourself in a situation or a group of people who are saying something that you know, isn't true, or that you know, to be different, it's like, are you going to sit there because you don't want to be judged for saying something in yeah. silence? Yeah. Or are you going to stand up and you say, Hey, that's actually not true. Yeah. And here's why. Right. I've and I think that's, that's, that's the part of allyship. I think people don't. Well, they don't want to be uncomfortable. Asking you to go march in the pride parade. Don't no ask right. me to do that or where, you know, fly rainbow flags out of your house or anything else. Right. Like I don't even do that. Well, I do go to pride parades, but I don't fly rainbow flags out of my house, yeah. but it's like, if you see something, say something. Right. Yeah. And it wouldn't be any different for any other marginalized group of people. Like yeah. if, you wouldn't That's you wouldn't true. find yourself in a group of people who were saying the n-word and you would just sit there in silence you wouldn't do oh, that yeah. yeah because you know you're like that's that's not okay so why yeah. do it in this instance right yeah. now that's a really good point and um i hope that helps a lot of people because and I, it's helped me because i've struggled with that um a lot before because like even going back to people just putting groups in boxes and you can be multiple things. I don't know why we all think you can only be I, one. It is like, insane to me, like the intersectionality of so many things that people just don't realize. Yeah. Like, you just don't realize how many things or how many buckets you actually fall into. Mm -hmm. Let's just pose this question, right? So like, if you know who you are and you know who you want to be and you know who you love and who's important to you, mm -hmm. why would you continue to invest in a relationship that doesn't serve those things? Yeah. I want it. <laughs> but you are. Yeah. Right. Like in some way, because you're scared of what people might think if you mm. are true to your thoughts and values. I just think that it's getting comfortable with being uncomfortable and then everything mm -hmm. falls in place where it needs to be. And I've like really accepted and been okay with like, there are going to be people in my life that do have negative things to say maybe about your community and that does hurt me and I want to explain that to them one day that um you know this is someone that I've loved they've been a part of my life my whole life and I like can't stand to hear about how awful they are when you don't know anything about them 
you just know that she's with a woman and um that really hurts to hear those things you know and so I just need to be a better ally on saying something and then saying it in a respectful way because I don't want to start a war I don't want to break up families I don't want to break up relationships that are close to me because they have other aspects that mean a lot um but I also need to not stand and let them say things about you when they really don't know anything. well that's what I was going to say it like at what expense yeah you know, at what expense yeah no for sure so looking forward what do you hope for society regarding the LGBTQ community um I think you know for me it's just like it is I think ideally for anyone in this community it's just like it's not a thing like it's yeah. just not a thing anymore. right you aren't labeled as like a gay woman it's like well she's just a woman that just happens to be gay yeah you know just like you're not like a black man it's like well it's just a man that just happens to be black like yeah. it's just it's just not a thing but again like I feel like that is just so futuristic to think about you know considering yeah. where we're at like yeah today's society um, but I will say what I've noticed just in the past few years, maybe even like now post COVID, COVID and post COVID one, people are doing a lot more of what they want because I think that mm -hmm. pandemic like shook them to their core. Like I'm going to live my life how I want to live it. So be it. Um, and two, our media that we're consuming, I've noticed a lot more media. BTQ, Representation. Yeah. Couples being represented in media or being um, represented. Yeah, it's in desensitizing people. Positions. And I think that's helping, you know, yeah. the desensitization of and the fetishization of it. I mm -hmm. That is a key point that we can unpack at a different date. But yeah. that part, yeah. like, period. <laughs> yeah, so. no, for sure. I hope they get to know the person and love the person for who they are. Um, and, and that's how they're judging who they want. Well, that's the thing is like being gay doesn't change you. Like I've always been this person. Yeah. I feel like I've been pretty consistent in who I was as a person yeah. to my core values. I just, yeah. Oh, I would argue to, to say that now you're different in the best way because you're living your life, how you want to yeah. live. Yeah. So well, I would it's a lot more liberating for sure. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. But I was always like a nice person. I was always a yeah. driven person. I was always a, I am a funny person. Um, but like, it's just, it's just more free now. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate you coming on the podcast today. You're I welcome. hope you uh, loved it for your first little pod. Um, I did. It was great. Thank you. Yeah. For I'm me. sure we could talk for hours and I'm sure people probably don't want to hear that, honestly, but <laughs> Maybe they do. I don't know. Maybe they do. I guess, who knows? Post an episode, see what they think. Let's yeah. get some, leave some reviews and then maybe we'll have episode two. Yes. Well, like, comment, subscribe. Definitely drop um a comment if you want to see more of the Tay and Chan show because I could be into that. I feel um, like we need to sign off though. Like what's the sign off going to be? Like, I know. Yeah. How Can we have like a virtual handshake? What does that look like? Well, also let us know in the comments what our virtual handshake should be. <laughs> Um, but I really appreciate you again. I love you so much. I love the love person you. that you have become today and I'm so proud of you in so many ways. So Thank you. you're not too bad for being a straight person. So. Oh, I <laughs> really love that. Can someone make that into a t-shirt or a hat? Or you're not, you're hat? not so bad for being straight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thanks again. Um, everyone, thanks for listening and tuning in. Uh, make sure you comment and say something nice about Tay because she's awesome. And um, we will see you next time. So later. Bye.